Professor Dave and Chegg here, we know what a solution is and we understand that any substance will have a particular solubility in some solvent. This means that some substances will be better able to dissolve in a particular solvent than others. But why would this be? What are the factors affecting solubility? Let's go through a few of them now. First, polarity is a huge factor. Polar substances will have a tendency to dissolve in polar solvents, while nonpolar substances will have a tendency to dissolve in nonpolar substances. This is because polar solute particles can make dipole-dipole interactions with polar solvent particles, which are energetically favorable. A polar and nonpolar substance, regardless of which is the solute and which is the solvent, are unable to make such electrostatic interactions, and thus are better off remaining separate, energetically speaking. We should also talk about the solubility of gases in liquid solvent. Different gases, like oxygen, hydrogen, methane, or carbon dioxide, will have greatly varying solubilities in water, and these solubilities depend on the ability of the different gas particles to make electrostatic interactions with water molecules in solution, just like the way ionic solids dissociate in aqueous solution to make ion-dipole interactions. Take for example oxygen and helium. Oxygen is completely nonpolar, and helium is monoatomic, so there are no dipoles present for interaction in either of these substances. That means that oxygen and helium are only able to interact with water molecules in the way of dipole-induced dipole interactions, which are rather weak. However, a molecule of oxygen is able to make much stronger interactions of this type than a helium atom can, as it is much larger than a helium atom, and therefore can exhibit stronger momentary or induced dipoles. That's why oxygen is three times more soluble in water than helium, but oxygen is still 100 times less water-soluble than chloroform, because chloroform can participate in actual dipole-dipole interactions with water, which are possible because of the formal dipole in the molecule. This is a much stronger interaction, which results in a much greater solubility. Since the dipole on every water molecule is interacting with the dipole on other water molecules, substances that can best approximate these types of interactions will be able to mix the most effectively amongst the water molecules, which means a greater solubility. For this reason, we should also discuss the identity of the solvent, since that will make a big difference. Something like oxygen will be 20 times more soluble in hexane than in water. This is because hexane molecules are unable to make dipole-dipole interactions like polar molecules do. Instead, they make induced dipole interactions just like oxygen molecules, though of a much greater strength since it is a larger molecule. This means that when oxygen dissolves in hexane, it will simply replace some of these dispersion interactions with other dispersion interactions, which is a relatively small discrepancy in energy, rather than if it is dissolved in water, where it has to disrupt the hydrogen bonds in pure water without being able to provide an equally strong interaction to replace them. Solubilities of various substances are also affected by temperature. We know that increasing the temperature will typically increase the solubility of solids in aqueous solution. This is in part because the resulting additional kinetic energy can push the molecules in the solid apart, but also higher temperatures increase the spontaneity of an entropically favorable process, and dissolution is entropically favorable, since matter is being dispersed. However, contrary to this trend, increasing the temperature of an aqueous solution will actually decrease the solubility of most gases in water. This is because the gas particles will have more kinetic energy, so they are moving more rapidly through the solution, and are therefore less capable of interacting with solvent particles. This also makes them less likely to be contained in solution, as they are more likely to have enough energy to escape the solution and move into the atmosphere. As we might imagine, this fact has serious ramifications for our ecosystem, since in addition to the slow and steady progress of climate change, some industrial processes increase the temperature of nearby rivers and lakes, which reduces the solubility of oxygen and thus reduces the concentration of oxygen in these bodies of water. Aquatic life, like fish, need oxygen to breathe, so if enough oxygen escapes the water, many fish can die, which can be catastrophic for that biosystem, since other organisms eat those fish. 
As we have just discussed the dependence of gas solubility on temperature, let's also discuss the solubility of a gas as it relates to the partial pressure of that gas. Specifically, the greater the partial pressure of a specific gas directly above a liquid solution, the higher the solubility of that gas will be. For example, carbonated beverages are prepared by exposing a liquid to a high-pressured sample of carbon dioxide gas. Because there are so many carbon dioxide molecules that are colliding with the gas-liquid interface, many more of these molecules will enter the solution, which results in a saturation of the beverage with carbon dioxide. This happens during the packaging of any can or bottle of soda. Then, once the container is opened at home, much of that carbon dioxide will quickly escape, which results in the familiar hiss we hear upon breaking the vacuum seal. With that, we should better understand the factors that dictate the solubility of a particular substance within a given solvent, whether the solute is solid, liquid, or gas. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.